The Beach Village District meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yay! And now that our esteemed leader is here, we will proceed. I was starting, but here you are. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you a better job than I did. I didn't do anything. <laughs> yes, she did. So we're going to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? We already did. did. Sit down, say it oh, yourself. Right. It was a main job. <laughs> you can still do yours. It's not my you main mine, job. I'll do it out. She did do that beautifully. We're having a quick meeting, so everybody... Okay, let's go. We can do that. We have sand sculptures going on outside. Everybody has to yep. get over there. And yep. Fireworks tonight. Concerts on the stage. Summer's in full swing. Beautiful day, too. All right. Perfect. Yeah. This was the yeah. best I've Sorry, I'm not. We're on old business anyway. All right, so old business. Let's start talking about old business. Maureen. I don't think I have anything. Um, no. It'd be new. Right. You might have something. Bob? I attended the Sea World Rise Commission meeting in Rye on. February 1st, it was kind of interesting. As you might expect, there's a whole range of views, theories. But basically, two things that stuck in my mind were, one, the definition of the seacoast is from Dover to uh, Seabrook. And there's 17 communities. The 17 communities represent 11% of the state's population and 25% of the state's gross domestic product, which means, in fact, the state has an enormous stake in this issue, however it plays out. It's, it's just too large an economic uh, force to be ignored. So I thought that was somewhat positive. The other positive note was no matter what happens, the power plant in Seabrook will not be impacted by sea level rise over the foreseeable period they're estimating it will rise too. That ends my own business. How did they determine that? The, the, the I'm happy to hear it, but they you know, they took okay. the worst case scenario by the year 2100 and said the water would get up to the parking lot of the nuclear power plant under those conditions, with one caveat. They don't know how they structured the mechanicals inside the building, but they felt it was, it was secure. It was not at risk under any of the different theories, which is good to know living next door. It is good to know. Yeah. I'm not going to be around. <laughs> Can I have your power of attorney? <laughs> All right. Um, Old business. We had a. We met up with the selectmen about a week ago. Not last Monday. The Monday before, we were talking about the um, construction of Ocean Boulevard and the sidewalks, and we had a lot of discussion both on both sides. And we were. I feel that the town, the village district, and the state were victorious because everybody came to agreement that we're going to work together. Unfortunately, all the selectmen weren't on board, but the selectmen passed it, um, and I think the state will uh, will negotiate well with the town, hopefully, and we, we offered any support that we can give um, because it only helps all of us if Ocean Boulevard is repaired, the sidewalks are repaired, and I just think it's a, a step forward. Uh, we've had a few steps back, and it's few lateral passes, I think now we're going to go forward, so I'm kind of excited about that. I just wanted to make a mention of that. Other than that, um, old business, we talked about a, um, a study that we had done uh, by Professor John Tomasi, one of his students, and um, it's a very well-detailed report, and I said we were going to go over it this month. Uh, unfortunately, we've just all been so busy, we haven't really picked it apart yet, so we'll go over it again probably by next month. So okay. um, it's pretty extensive. It's pretty interesting. And if anybody wants to look it over, I have a copy of it at the at the hotel or just wait till that meeting and I'll bring some extra copies if anybody wants to see it. 
what's, what it shows is the amount of revenue that the village district from our advertising, from our concerts, from our events like the sand sculpture and the, and the talent competitions and all the different things that we do, how much money it actually brings into the, the area. And um, like I said before, you might need a uh, marketing engineering degree to kind of read it all through, but uh, it's very interesting. So uh, I, I will have copies for people to look it over when they, when they want to see it. And, uh, and the, the state should be uh, very pleased with Hampton Beach Village District for what we do. So that's, that's it on old business. Um, new business, Bob. Okay. We have gotten permission from the police department and with John Kane's efforts, we have prepared a sign that will be made into signage. It's a basic theme, see something, say something, and we'll just send it around the room so everybody can take a look at it. Put it on the camera. <laughs> it's perfect. Huh? perfect. Yeah. They got them on 495. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think that, I don't know, how many did we get made? Uh, we just got approval, and that was the proof. The proof. All right, so I think it would be good in some of the businesses as well as on the Chamber of Commerce building. Maybe if there's room in the state signs, that'd be great if they want them. As a follow up to that, Chuck, if they say something, who do they say it to? Uh -huh. as a we follow -up. answer that question. Oh, I see. The police. Okay. Yeah, the police okay. have a, the non 911. How, how are they going to react to it? Who? The police? Yeah. Well, they'll have to sort it out based on the nature of the phone call, whether that would be something they'd respond to immediately, something they check at another point in time. I, just, I believe they they knew this was coming. I mean, you discussed it with them, did you not? Oh yeah, yeah. this is yeah. so this isn't yeah. this isn't this is something that we just months. did without their knowledge. They are fully aware that this is happening. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have had to put Seabrook's phone number on. <laughs> or, or, your or, house, yours. or your house phone, yeah. <laughs> or your home phone, yeah. <laughs> Is that it? Yep. This is going to be a fast move. Maureen. Oh, I'm going to talk a long time now. <laughs> July 6th, the Sandcastles will be remaining uh, until the 7th this year. And on the 6th, we are having our first annual Hampton Summer Games in conjunction with the state and Diana Martin and the Rec Department. And uh, we will be having activities not only on the beach, uh, but we will be having uh, music on the stage, a DJ on the stage, and a dance troupe, Bob? Yeah. Um, yeah, kids, reason. dance troupe on the stage. So it, it would be going, it, it's from 10 to 2? 10 to 2 in general, possibly 3 for the on DJ. Uh, On July 6th. And isn't Experience Hampton providing ice Excuse cream? Excuse me, or? yes. And we're going to have water, of course. And ice cream provided by Experience Hampton. Yep. Is that what you're calling between day? Was that yeah. Hampton, it, it was before. Now it's Hampton Summer Games. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. That was our working name. Work, yeah. That was the working name. You've been busy with signage, huh, John? Yes. <laughs> Very nice. Nice. The target group for this event is age 8 to 14 in general. That's not to say someone who's 7 or 15 couldn't participate, but that's the group we're shooting to attract. That traditionally is a time where the beach goes sky high with 4th of July, and then it drops to, to, to nothing, and uh, then, we, then we work our way back up again. So the reason for this was maybe just to create some interest. It's not as busy, so bringing some people in from town as well would, uh, that, you know, a lot of people in our town, our town of Hampton, don't know what we do down at the beach. And it, it just really amazes me that they're three minutes away and they don't come down. And um, so I think stuff like this uh, can keep us all working together. So I think it's great. I forgot to mention something. Uh, on um, Sunday of Memorial Day weekend, uh, we had our very first tryouts for the Hampton Talent that were kind of live. We had a, a, a DJ, what was a DJ? He's, he was a karaoke man who also performed. Um, they all do. They do not. The karaoke <laughs> one, I'll perform. <laughs> no, they don't. This, this man is, it, it, Chris Michaels, he's a wonderful <laughs> singer. He plays the harmonica. He's a very good entertainer. 
Uh, anyway, uh, Julie and Barbara and Kathy Pepin and myself, we were there, and we um, had an unbelievable, it was rainy and cold. Very cold. And uh, we had an unbelievable turnout. I would say there had to be maybe 45, 50 people who get up, and kids and adults, and they were terrific. We've got a lot of really good people. Glenn was there, and he was warm. Glenn was warm, yes. He, he didn't share with us the heater that was snuck. He in stayed the, in the car. <laughs> but anyway, we've forgiven him. Um, it, was, it was a big success. I was very thrilled with it. And it is an, another way to get some talent, other than the way we're going to do it anyway with the online. So I just wanted to mention What kind that. of numbers of people? Where does the cutoff? How many people can you actually do at this event? Yeah. Really, it, when you, we have to... Uh, ultimately, we're under the confines of that schedule that's on the stage. The 7 to 8.30, is it? Or, and then you take a... 8.30 to 9.30. And then you take the break in the middle. And then usually, we go usually to about quarter to 10 now. But anyway, uh, so we're, we're kind of confined. We're pushing the, the envelope on both ends of the Yeah. So basically, on... But that wasn't a number. I asked I'm, for a number. Uh, give me a moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're going, we're going, we, um, I would say... 24. 12 in the first part and 12 in the second part. Maybe another one would and that's squeeze what, in. Junior and senior? Well, well, the junior night, 24. The senior night, 24. And the last night, 24. We do 12 and 12. Don't you think if the chairman went to this, he'd know well, all about he's it? I've seen him go by once in a while. <laughs> I've been to there. I just don't <laughs> stay for the whole time because some people are working. But anyway, it, really we, can't, we can't go over the 24, I don't think. Maybe we have. Mm. But it's you really have to stay within the confines of that timeline. Yeah. Yes, you have, as a matter of fact. Yes, I know. Come. I did last year, I know. Okay. And we only didn't have enough medals. Do you remember that? Somebody was. But the woman who didn't get a medal also got $1,000. So I think she went she home won. okay. Yeah, she's okay. She bought her own medal. Yeah. She was fabulous, too. But anyway, that's all I have to say. Okay. Um, speaking with a few people about traffic and, and um, last year, Chief Sawyer, they did a project, a trial effort to have uh, some, some more uh, traffic officers um, at the busy time, and it seemed to go well, and they'd like to try to do something yeah. else again. And the chief is looking outside of, of Hampton, maybe, bringing somebody from the sheriff's department or UNH to come and um, do some work. And I don't know if there's any money or extra money around. We're talking to um, the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Maybe if we could match some money with them in the town, we could maybe pick a few of the key days. Uh, I think the main streets that really need a traffic cop is 8th Street because they're coming out of that big parking lot. G Street, they're coming, it's the first street up and the fire come up G Street. B, no, I'm sorry, D Street by McDonald's and then to really clear the people out is if we had something working on Church Street that could get that traffic moving. Once you get past Church Street, it moves nicely. But uh, it backs up so far that then it backs all the way up to the parking lot at the, at, by 8th Street. So I think it would definitely be something. So I, I, I would like to see us maybe if, if the town, com, the Hampton Beach Area Commission and, and the Village District, if we, if, if they're going to put some funds in, maybe we can match the funds well, we to help it. this. We did this before. We go step, but so. Is this for, when are we doing this? All summer or in the some big the holidays? Key, some of the key times in the summer. Mm. Um, and it's it's basically everybody that's around that's involved pitching in and seeing what we can do. And I, I don't know what Chief Sawyer's budget is. Um, I, I don't I know I don't want to go at it alone. But if, if other people want to go at it with us, I would think it would be good. Do you have any sense of how much it might cost? I think last year we gave. Do you know what we did? We put some money into it last no, year. No, we didn't. We didn't. Do you remember I what they put? I don't know. Somehow the amount that sticks in my mind is twelve thousand, maybe. But I could, that could be completely wrong. And I think that it came, the money last year came from the Hampton Area Commission. Hampton Area Commission gave us portion of it. They didn't do the whole thing. We didn't do anything. We didn't do anything. So I, I don't know if we can put a couple thousand into it to help uh, 
might be something to get we'll the ball have to figure out where we're gonna Again, what do you mean by key times? Fourth of July, what are you talking about? Fourth of July, certain Sunday Wednesdays, afternoon. Sunday afternoons. Sunday afternoons. They have an idea of when it should be. Oh, okay. it, it's just throwing it out there that we're, we're interested in helping if we can. Uh, it's, there's nothing set in stone. It hasn't been brought before mm -hmm. the, the selectmen yet, I don't think, has it? No, no, and I, I and I, it it's been mentioned that. around, and I and I talked to uh, John Nyan, and yeah. he's mentioned it as well, and and that doesn't mean this is going to happen. I just want to know that if yeah, we, if, as a as a group, we could uh, we could. Uh, we'll, have, help. we'll have to look to see. You know, one of the things that they did last year, they put a policeman, as you said, at uh, D Street, and instead of what happens is that. If one person is standing there to cross over, the, the traffic stops. So if they put a policeman there, he tells the people, right. wait a minute. Mm -hmm. And that, but that way a whole bunch of cars can go by. That's right. Then stop it, and all the people, it be, might be 10 or 20. It makes a huge difference. Over. But what's what's happened now is, is the, from talking to the chief, and he, he actually came to our meeting here and told us, they don't have the, the offices. They can't get the offices. It's a nationwide problem. Right. Um, so... One thing that just happened, I think it might be, might be interesting and it really fits into what we're talking about, is that you know, Fred sent a letter to the governor and Nancy Stiles got back uh, after the governor immediately gave a letter back to Nancy with an explanation. And the, uh, there was a talk of that they cut the uh, police budget by 50%. Yeah, that's state. why I heard that. Yeah. And well, have you heard that they actually restored it? from using the money that they got, federal money, from that are supposed to be for those DWI roadblocks. Mm -hmm. So they are going to have just as many places. Oh, good. Well, so maybe that he'll be, able to, he'll be able to staff the, the crossings. Because it does make a difference. And then also they do the barriers over 4th of July in front, of, good too. In front of the takeout. It, it's just, it's, it's, it's the jaywalking is, seems to be the problem. I mean, no one, no one uses the and that the happens crosswalk. in the police department and the Hampton Area Commission. Yeah. That's where that money came from. Right. Yeah, and I did talk to John Nine about that again, too. I saw him the other day, and he said he would definitely be willing to uh, help out on that. Yeah, but, but, but their money is dwindled. There's not a lot of money in their yeah. account either, so, I mean, it's not... Uh, it depends. I mean, Everything is money, <laughs> unfortunately. Hey, you guys talk about traffic. Yeah. I don't understand why they can't have two lanes going into State Park on Saturday and Sunday morning. I know, we've talked to them about that too, and I don't know why, I don't, I, know, I don't understand that. I so. heard one explanation when I talked to one of them over there. They said, oh, they're afraid that somebody's gonna steal money. Yeah, well, your tickets are numbered. If you, if you get rid of 30 tickets, and let's say the cost is $10, you should have $300 in your pocket. It doesn't take an Einstein to figure that out. If they have two people, two lines going in, one walks and the other one is in the house, just to get rid of the traffic. The traffic is backed up all the way over to the boroughs, and they all want to go into the state car. I watch it every Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, no, I've seen that. I, I, I mean, it, it, it should be a simple process. Exactly. There should be two lanes going in, and the, the traffic is backed up all the way on to Ashworth Ave, also trying to get in. It's stupid. And if you're sitting on the bridge, want to go down to Ocean Boulevard, you're stuck. They did tell us they have a new cash register system. Remember at that part meeting we went to? Yeah. They did say they, that they need a second person there. to collect money. They don't need yes. a cash register. They've done something to So has it started no. yet? I watched them two weeks ago. It was, the traffic was all the way over to the boroughs. Mm -hmm. Stupid. Mr. Catalano wouldn't appreciate you calling it the bar. I did call him stupid. I said, no, I wouldn't. I didn't say him that you call him his place. Now you get the wrong name on the store now. Call him his place, the Barros now. So you got to remember. Yes. <laughs> call it. It was Max. Okay. <laughs> so um, another thing, maybe uh, Rick or Regina could tell me who to talk to, or maybe you could look into it. The bottom of F Street. The crosswalk is on the wrong side. Fred needs to know. Okay, well, I've, I said something years ago, and it's because so, it, the way when, when people are going down, they're taking a left. Okay. Crosswalk should be on the right hand side, mm -hmm. and that should that would eliminate people getting run over because you look to the right to see if cars are coming, and you zoom out of there, and people are crossing. So, it's a, habitually, they've been going on the wrong side. 
it's just since the new sidewalks. And and I said something to someone years ago. Well, we've already got the the the, the curb cut or whatever for the. And I don't see. I don't think it would be that expensive, but it would save accidents because there's always accidents down that way, and it would also help the traffic flow better out of out of F Street because that gets backed up by the casino. And if people are crossing and that on the crosswalk, then all those cars can move. It would make a huge difference. Yeah, I think that this year we're going at the board of select and we're going to, I know there's going to be a conversation because I'm going to start it about sidewalks really for the whole town and that there'd be a, a more of a method of continuing to do something about them and things like that need to be done and they need to be maintained. Right. So I'll bring it up. All right. Okay. Yeah, because if you go down the boulevard, most of them are in the correct spots. Mm -hmm. That particular one, the busiest one, uh, next to the casino, is uh, on the wrong side. So. Um, well, we have two selectmen here. This is in that family of traffic control issues, but not exactly what Chuck is talking about. Is there any likelihood we can get some evacuation route signage from the beach uh, for two reasons? One, to help people know how to proceed. And two, it would give us credits towards the community rating system. Mm -hmm. That's something that needs yeah. to be brought up. And we should have you come into the Board of Selectmen and talk about that. Okay. You'd be a perfect person to do that. And we'll make sure you get on the agenda at a time you want to do. Okay. It's, you're a perfect person to do it. And it needs to be brought up. And let me tell you, that's one of the hardest things to get are signs. And that would take quite a few signs. So we need to raise that mm -hmm. awareness. Okay. So I'll make sure that you get on one of the okay. agendas. I wonder, if, I wonder if the uh, Seabrook Nuclear Power Station should pay for the signs. Well, that's possible, but since we're always suing them, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good, good point, good point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good point, Rick. <laughs> we may, we, hopefully, it's gonna, there's going to be some good things coming out with some past lawsuits. Great. Going to win some of those assessment fights? Maybe. We'll <laughs> Oh, that's it. Strike that. Strike that from the record. No. <laughs> All right. I think that's it for new business. Anybody else? That it? No. All right. Linda, you have been very busy out there. There's a lot of weeding to do. Hi, Linda Gebhardt, Hampton Beach Village District Beautification Committee. Um, I'm sorry I haven't been here sooner. I've been busy working, and um, the Hampton Garden Club meeting is exactly on the same night at exactly at the same time. Um, but our meetings are done, so for the summer. So I started working in April when we got back from Florida with the spring cleanup, um, replacing hoses, doing that kind of stuff. Currently, we have um, about 10 people on the beautification committee. Um, we have one sitting over there in the corner behaving herself. Uh, and she's doing, Terry's doing a very wonderful job recruiting some new people. So that's good. We always want more people helping out. Um, someone is out watering somewhere at, at, at the locations. There's roughly seven garden locations. Um, the South End Park, um, where the Clues boat is and um, the urns there. The Sea Memorial, of course, um, the big bridge, mile-long um, bridge, Island Garden, which is across from the Ocean Walk, which is the biggest, the firehouse, little pocket garden around the corner, the big lilac stand on, D um, on um, DOT land, the stage, of course, and the Ashworth Island. We had a, a little vandalism issue with one of the urns. Um, unfortunately, it happened the night, the very night we planted them. So I sent a, an email to the commissioners, but Maureen probably was on vacation. But I did get that email. It, was that a, uh, had nothing to do with the bands or anything? It had to do with no, I'm, no, there was no, because we did it on a Monday night because there was nobody playing. Okay. I mean, we did it on a Monday day. Tuesday, I go to check on them. I check on them every morning. I get there. One urn is completely gone. One urn has no flowers. The two other urns were okay. So I went into the state office to complain, and they said, yeah, there, it happened overnight. The urn was broken to a zillion pieces. It must have made an awful noise because those urns are concrete, about yeah. four inches thick. They're huge. So um, we lost all the 
flowers, and so I've had to um, replant. I guess my my question to commissioners: Do you want just want to go with the three urns? Lowe's doesn't carry them anymore. I've been online. I can't find a match. So I think it would look strange to have three matching and one oddball. Or do I replace the two, the one remaining small one, get two new urns? And so it's kind. Of, I just wanted feedback to kind of see how you felt about it. Do you want to just These go? These are all the urns that were on the stage? Pardon? The urns on the stage? Yes. There's, there there were was four? four. Right, but now we only have three. Okay, I thought there were only two. There are four big urns there used to be. Right. There were two smaller ones and two oh. taller ones. Okay. And um, they were very, they're, they're concrete. They're, know, they were ornate, they're they're very hate. plain. Um, so kind of let me know how, look at, see what you think. Do you think, you know, does the three look all right? If, if not, <coughs> I'll replace, I'll get two smaller ones that kind of, they won't match exactly, but they'll go with them. So let me know what you think, how you, you know, how you think they look, and I'll do something about it. I, I wanted them to look nice for the sand sculpture, so, right. um, so I've had to replace the flowers of the tones <laughs> because they were just, they were pulled up, and anyway, let's hope that's the last of it. And I was thinking, those urns have been on the stage, how old is the stage, the new shell? Six years, five years? Yeah, yeah, easy, yeah. Yeah. So we're lucky we've had him that long. That you know, I mean, I'm thankful that we've had him that long. There's I'd maybe get two new ones and put one aside just in case another one breaks. Yeah, uh, yeah. One of them, <coughs> one that is broken was what? One of the big ones. No, smaller, smaller ones. Okay, so, so one's yeah. about three feet, and the other ones was maybe about two. I'm guessing. So now we have two larger ones and one smaller one. Oh yeah, let's get two smaller ones. In or do we want to move the three of them onto one side of the stage? How much did they cost? How much? No. They weren't. You know, thirty dollars. I'm guessing for the smaller ones. I've started looking, and they're around twenty nine, thirty dollars for a Getting small one. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have three boats, two are planted, we have the third boat yet to do, um, a total of 12 urns, um, the two in the state park, the three on the stage, and um, four in front of the ocean walk, there's four oh, yeah. ovals, and they've been watering, the deal is, all plant, they water. Of course, they get busy, but they've been very good, and the daisies are blooming, and the, okay. so... They all look good. And, of course, the three big on, on top. No one's going to walk off with the three ashworth <laughs> urns. Uh, snow plow. Now you just dead someone. Yeah. They've now dinged them. They, you know, plow's dinged them. But. Yeah. So those are looking good. Um, okay. The, the big island in front of the ocean walk, the Mile Long Bridge um, Garden Island, I just wanted to thank um, Madeline Good by name, Linda Richtenbach, and um, Marie Mahoney. They helped John and I. It took us a week and a half. We haven't mulched that garden. Big mistake in two years. Well, when you don't mulch something because you're busy doing other things, the crabgrass got in there, and we had no recourse. We really had to rip stuff up, and um, it was a major job. So John and I and these three ladies helped us. John by himself put down 70 seven zero bags of mulch on that um, island. So when you drive by that, you know, you drive it by quick and it's just a, a flash of color. Mm -hmm. Walk that garden. It's at least 60 feet long on either side and the garden goes from maybe two feet up to maybe five feet wide. That's a lot of garden. Um, so now it's, we put preen down which kills seeds, wheat seeds, and we mulched it really good. So it should be the rest of this. It's gorgeous. Uh, I mean, if you have time and there's a sidewalk that goes, it really uh, looks nice. But most people drive by, they see that flash of color. They didn't see the weeds. When I was complaining how bad it was, people said, oh, it looks nice. Yeah, we'll get in there and walk it. So now the weeds are gone and the flowers are doing good. I'm happy to report. And um, anyway, that, that was a lot of work. Um, so like I said, we can always use volunteers. Um, at any of the locations, we have water available to us, so it's a matter of just getting the water to the flowers. And then the wind has been relentless. 
the um, things are getting you know, so dried out because of the wind. So enough with the wind. Let's hope that changes and that stops. Um, the state park has, has hired a man, Pete um, Vinny, to work at the um, open green spaces along the sidewalk. Remember, they said that's the meaning. I've met him, thanks to Terry, again. He's very, he does a good job, too. He's doing a really good job, and he's removed all the sand. He's doing. You know, he's, he's yeah, he's doing his job. He's, he's doing a good job, removes the sand. Um, he asked John and I to walk with him and identify some weeds because it's hard. What's a weed and what's a plant? And so we did that yesterday and um, kind of gave him some pointers as to, I mean, it sounds silly, but he doesn't want to pull up something that's meant to be there. But yet, when you have a weed this big, he's saying, now, is that a weed or is that not right. a weed? So, um, but he's very, he asking. It very, there's some really big, nasty weeds. So. He's doing a great some job. The roots on those big tall ones. Oh, I know. Well, yeah. there, there's some. There's a. It's <laughs> called an evening, uh, evening primrose, which gets like as big as me and has little yellow flowers, and so now they're only about that big. But it, they're, they're huge weeds. I wanted to thank Glenn French over there, who's on his um, texting. He, uh, oh. Whoa, Glenn's texting. <laughs> 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 Pay attention, Glenn. Um, I, I haven't missed a word. He's working. What was the name of Glenn's those weeds? Glenn's working. I assure you he's working. <laughs> oh, 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 those weeds. <laughs> he let us use the mic for Art and Bloom last week, and it made a big difference. So that was a big, big help. Thank you for that. That's a much bigger system than you need to quiet. Yeah, he, he shows up at these two and big speakers, and I go, uh, Glenn, I think we'll leave. <laughs> so one speaker was enough, and we could make announcements. Art and Bloom was very successful, and we had about 100 people, 130 people show up, and it was at the Partridge House, assisted living. So that was good. Um, and the gallery, Skip Windermiller um, gave it. We, we're going to have the gallery, and it's going to open June 30th. So we're going to have the the, um, the art gallery and um, gift shop at the um, Oceanside Mall. And all the visitors to Hampton Beach love seeing the flowers. Sometimes they want to talk to you, and you're trying to weed, and you're trying to water, and you're trying to be nice to them, and then they want you to take a picture of them, and you smile, right? And you try to be very pleasant to, to the visitors. Hard I put them to work. People come to the hotel, I can yeah. make them work while I'm doing things. Yeah, and especially the Sea Memorial. People really, they really, they really appreciate the fact that the Sea Memorial looks nice, it's well kept, we pick up the cigarette butts and all that stuff, um, and they'll tell you, you know, that's my uncle and my great, you know, the name, and so that spot means an awful lot to an awful lot of people, and the lady is, uh, I think, one of the most photographed ladies on, on the beach, so we try to keep that garden looking really nice for everyone. Um, I think that's it. Any questions nope. on anything? Great job. So, anyway, if anybody is watching and, and you'd like to come help water the flowers, we'd love to have you contact one of the commissioners or Terry or myself. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kathy, do you have anything to say about Earth Day? Oh, sure. I liked all the music and the activity that was going on that morning. That, that was day? great. Yeah. It drew a lot of people to that section. It was. It was awesome. And then you, then you hooked them in to work. Good. Um, we're talking about June 4th, which was World Oceans Day, and the Blue Ocean Society had our first first annual road, 5K road race, but we we just had a wonderful time that day, and for those of you who were there, um, you did enjoy, enjoy the music and um, the beach cleanup, and then the, the band on the stage, they were very good, a lot of people liked them, and I'd like to particularly thank the organizations from the beach who supported us. So um, BZ Market gave us lots and lots of oranges, and the runners loved it. Um, the Coffee Break Cafe donated um, a gift certificate for the runners. All the top runners got lots and lots of prizes. I mean, some of my students won, and they were telling me, look what I won. I mean, it was like, it was really very exciting. Um, uh, the, o the Ocean Walk gave us gift certificates. Um, Tommy T McGurk gave us gift certificates from McGurk's. 
Um, the casino supported us. The Chamber of Commerce supported us. It was just, I, I just, I thought it was just like a very enjoyable day. And we're looking forward to next year. Um, we're looking for more sponsors. Um, we've got a lot more lead time now, and plus we know what we're doing a little bit better. So I think next year we'll, we're definitely, you know, it'll, it'll be back. Um, the Blue Ocean Discovery Center opens for the summer this Saturday, and will be open every day from this Saturday on. Um, this first week we have reduced hours, so slightly shorter hours, but then starting next Saturday, we're open the regular weekends 10 to 7 and during the week um, 12 to 7. And we co corresponding with the sandcastles and all the rest of it. Okay. So anybody out there wants to volunteer? We are always, always looking for volunteers, okay. even if it's like two hours. Okay. Terry, she volunteers for the Discovery Center too. Okay. So um, anybody. Enjoy that. All right, great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Public comment. Rick. <coughs> well, one thing um, you were mentioning about uh, all that you do, um, the value that the precinct and the, these festivals and stuff bring to the town one thing is important to remember about the sidewalks which are going to be done from Winnicott Road to all the way to the bridge but that opens the door for people like you mentioned why don't the, why don't do we not have more participation from the town and I think when there are nice sidewalks people will be able to walk down there and want to walk and nice wide sidewalks <coughs> particularly in the main part of the beach is going to be very important and so the town talked about this week at the Board of Selectmen that um, we're going to have a committee that's going to get together with the state, um, and it's going to consist of the town manager, probably the lawyer, the department heads, and two selectmen, which Regina and myself are going to um, represent the town. And I think it's important because this is a time when there's a new person that heads DOT, and I've been lucky enough to meet her, uh, Victoria Sheehan, and I think that she's going to do wonderful things for Hampton. And it's good to get on board and to have a new spirit of that we're going to be cooperative. I think it's very, very good. And um, so I think it's important that uh, all we'll be doing is bringing the information back. But I think it's important that People let um, Regina know how important it is. And this isn't something that we haven't been working on. I mean, I've been there for 12 years now as selectman. This has been my m number one thing. And finally, we've been able to do something. And, you know, why carry on, you know, that Hatfield and McCoy atmosphere <laughs> that just went on for so many years? And it's really a time of a rebirth in so many ways, and things like Blue Ocean and... Please, Michael, I hear a lot of positive things about your Blue Ocean project and the arts and all, all the other things. The Chamber of Commerce, I've heard so many people complain, and Julie just yesterday dropped off of those books, and that people are really commenting on the effectiveness of your book. The pictures and everything, it looks like it's high quality. So whoever's responsible for that. So I think it's important that we're going to be, and you know, at the Hampton Area Commission, which the three of us, uh, and you used to be on it. No, I'm not. No, no. Not on that well, one. you're. <laughs> <laughs> but we've um, how important it is to us, and we know from being on the commission for so long that it's just it's been on everyone's number one thing, and a lot of people have put forth a lot of work, and I think we're, it's great that it's gone to got to this point. So everybody should uh, let pe everyone know what's happening. Okay. Their, their yeah. opinions. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. 
Regina Barnes, and yes, I was one of the no votes on May 23rd, and I just wanted to explain the reason why I said no, is I am new at this, and believe me, I know all the work that the precinct, the village district does. It looks great down here. It looks better. I've grown up here my whole life, and you know, five, ten years ago, it looked a lot different than it does now. And the reason why I voted no was because, you know, I've been doing my research, and everything that, you know, NHMA, the laws say that if we're going to enter into an agreement with the state for, to maintain property that is not owned by us, that we have the agreement in place before we do that. So when I said no on that Monday night, I said no to the motion as it was presented. I would love to see the roads down here. I would love the sidewalk work to be done. And I'm looking forward to the committee we established, both Rick and I, and all the people from the state, from the town, from the beach, working together and getting the project done. And that is it. Is there any chance that Thanks, one of us could uh, attend any of these meetings? I'll, I'll bring that up right. and, uh, to Fred and see if that's a good point. We'll even be quiet. Yeah. No, we'll, I'll bring that up to Fred. Because you know how quiet the three of us are. <laughs> yeah. Another point you might want to check with the state, what they are spending to do the east side of that sidewalk for snow removal every winter. Well, that's going to be part of it. It's, there's been a lot of things, and there's been a lot of loose promises, and those are the things that have to be done up, you know, to be decided on. And whatever is decided on, it has to go to the governor's council. And I think it's probably important to do it before there is a change. Maggie Hassan's been very, uh, I think she's aware of what's happening here. Um, and, you know, and I'm sure whoever else is coming along might even be better. But it's time to get it moving with this. Uh, all the, well, Chris Sununu, number one, is on the executive console, and he has been unbelievable. Uh, I'm not necessarily a Republican, but he's done so much for him, that's what I've said. And uh, Nancy I, Stiles has been yeah, great, too. I, I personally yeah. have met um, as selectman twice with Chris Sununu, and he has done more than anybody else that I've oh. seen. And um, I don't know, it doesn't, I don't know, I think he's going to have a rough time uh, being reelected or whatever he's going for governor's office. Mm -hmm. But if he was governor, he'd probably do a lot for Hampton. Um, there's a lot of people that have put a lot of time into this. I think uh, the state sees the importance of Hampton, whether they're Republican or Democrat, that if they're smart enough, they're going to work with us. Yeah. Um, so hopefully whoever gets in will be on our team. And your figures are a good point. Yeah. So uh, that might be a very good reason to be there, and that's why I'll, I'll definitely bring it up. All right, super. Thank you. Brian Lapham at the last meeting brought up it cost $270,000 for cleanup costs. That's what he said. That's what he said. At the yeah. We got cleaned, Ash was asked, got cleaned once in the last 10 years. We had a snowstorm, some people were pitching or complaining, they cleaned it once. So the kids could stand there and wait for the school bus. It's not going to cost $270,000. For $270,000, I'll give up the restaurant and clean the street. <laughs> <laughs> with a shovel. With a shovel. With a shovel, yeah. With a shovel. One of the things the state has agreed to, uh, it just seems like they've agreed to, so that we'll need to get it right, is that people are going to be able to push the snow out into the street. And if that happens, that's absolutely remarkable because I've seen, I have uh, shoveled snow for 53 years, and all they do is keep pushing it back. So I can't even imagine that happening. But We'll see how it, maybe it will be a certain area where the sidewalks are or whatever. So there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was absolutely right, that $275,000 figure would clean that sidewalk Ridiculous. for 400 years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, there's, it's, it, this is going to be small potatoes, and that's the whole point. And like I said at the meeting, by the time they uh, get pay their first 100000 they will have collected probably over a hundred million dollars in taxes from uh, uh, Winnicunit Road to uh, the 6 Ocean Boulevard to 615 Ocean Boulevard. So there's a lot of, you know, there's money to be done. And we have to do things better, not just here, but uptown. Two people have, in the lab recently have fallen, two older people, actually they're not even that old, 
one in front of Casas's office and one in, at the cemetery on, on High Street. Uh, an 85-year-old woman hit a roof uh, and went down, and her life has probably changed forever. You know, those are the type of things that it's not just about the beach, and I'm going to make sure that there is a discussion about what happens uptown, too. Definitely. All right. Anybody else? John, you had something to say, didn't you? I'll make it quick. Hi, Julie Payne, hey, Marketing Director for the Hampton Beach Village District. Thank you very much for having me. Maureen's already talked about July 6th. Uh, it's another extension of the season. Uh, Chuck had related to that it is a slow part of the day, I mean, week. Um, you know, they, they take one day off and get four days off. So what we're finding is instead of taking the whole week, they uh, make a, a long weekend of, out of it. Uh, if there's any information that you're looking for, please call Diana Martin at the uh, State Parks at 926-3932. The sandcastles are underway. They look great. The theory is uh, under the sea. they got sea turtles and, and Neptune and, and um, 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 sea horses and all, all kinds of great things. So it's really a nice theme, and it's all coming together. Um, you see Charlotte Preston? Yeah. Oh, is, is oh, excellent. Yeah. Wonderful. That will be done. Um, Greg needs some help, as we all need volunteers. Uh, it's a big event for a long time, so please call uh, this number, 548-6002, and volunteer a little bit of time. Is that Jim? Uh, that's actually Greg's number. Uh, he put it in the brochure, so that okay. I'm using his number. Um, the calendar events has been out. All the businesses, Greg, uh, Rick, when I was passing out, you were closed. Uh, <laughs> anyways, he has one anyways. Well, that's great. They're all out. Uh, if you don't have one, uh, the chamber has a bunch of them. Please stop in and take them. Put in your cottages or whatever you need. Um, the, um, all the music's there. All the events are there. Talking about events, this weekend is very big for us. Um, not only the sandcastles, we've got a lot of advertising going on with WMUR, NECN, WBZ, all the um, newspapers throughout New England and Canada. Um, we ha do have the Canadians coming down. I'm listening to them and looking at motorcycles, and there's a lot of Quebec plates. Yes. Channel 25 with Fox News was there today. Yep, Channel 25 Fox News was, was out there, and I'm sure we're going to have the other people coming in as the competition gears up. But let's not forget the other things that are going on this weekend. We've got fireworks on Saturday night, which is unusual. Um, you know, for we got fireworks tonight. We got fireworks tonight and Saturday night. We've got the Continentals. Maybe is that who we got? Saturday. That's the new group. Saturday night. The new group. Yeah. The new group. And um, catamaran races are this weekend. Um, and we also and it's, which not gonna is, it's not going to rain. It's not going to rain. The catamaran races are going. That's something. And yeah. we've, we've got a big volleyball tournament uh, down by um, basically H Street down. There's um, I think there's going to be about 24 nets. Wow. The, they're all young girls and kids, primarily girls. They're very good. They're really into the sport. Um, My young girls that are primarily girls. <laughs> Matt Morrison is is the instructor. He's <laughs> also going to be there for the uh, Hampton Beach Summer Games. Oh, okay. So, yeah. anyways, that's real quick and. How many of these signs do you think we should get, Chuck? That is above my pray grade, Mr. Lat. <laughs> <laughs> That's copying a play. <laughs> How many do you think we're going to get? Glenn, do you want to talk about anything? I suppose. <laughs> While we're waiting for Glenn to get to the podium, Chuck, uh, <laughs> Chuck I just want to mention that um, I, it's my understanding that this Friday is the last day of school for Hampton and also and also for the schools in Massachusetts. So we should see an influx. It's a little bit earlier this year because they didn't have a lot of snow days. But it's this well, there's Friday. some already out. Yeah. yeah. So so the kids will be arriving with their families to the beach. Yeah. We are in full swing. Um, entertainment every night on the seashell stage. Uh, the earliest ever. This week has been a little slow, and frankly, I'm a little doubtful whether we're going to be doing it, but we've got to take that step forward. We started the entertainment on set the first Saturday in May, so we did every Saturday in May. We did 
every Saturday and Sunday in June, and last Friday we started with a full program. Seven, taking a look at the crowd and the and the uh, participation and and the stands on the beach. If there are people out walking around, we continue the program. If not, we'll do a long set and close early. Uh, I agree. We thought we had a great day on on that Saturday with the entertainment. Um, Bolton Park. Uh, joined us both in the afternoon and in the evening. They had a great time too. They like to come back. Um, I thought we did a pretty good job on the junior high school prom. I want to commend everybody who assisted. Oh, I think it was better than pretty good for myself. I, um, as Maureen says, we know how to throw a party. We do, and and I know that the parents were very appreciative. I, there was a lot of excellent feedback. I wanted the children, the the, the 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 school. I wanted those people to enjoy it and feel that. I believe they did. Is it true you were trying, trying to introduce them to the Continentals? Yeah. <laughs> As a matter of fact, well, I get I get some very favorable feedback about the fact that the band right. was on the stage. They were thrilled. So um, I want to mention too. Um, I know I wasn't here, but the high school had to cancel rain yes. day. Yeah. They 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 were concerned about the weather. Yeah. And the, the fact is that the forecast was not favorable. Yeah. Uh, it turned out that they could have performed. Oh. But I think when you're, when you're trying to herd a group yeah. of students who are more concerned about... Did they about, have a rain date? They did, and it was last Tuesday, but this is exam week. Oh, and they didn't want to crash yeah. that. So, I uh, yeah. Next well, year, would it be better to move it ahead a week so the rain date would be before exam week? Um, we did that... That's, 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 I think that's really up to them. I'll do whatever, I'll yeah. work with whatever anybody wants. Um, but I, the question is whether we should continue to do the program as we're doing. Are we, are we forcing something that's really, I don't know. We'll talk about that. We're going to. You mean the high school playing? I'm I know when we met with the gentleman. No, he's talking about oh. the program. Both. It's early. You know, you know, you know it, this is, there's not one thing. And unto itself. It all fits like a glove. Everything has to work together in, in, in harmony. So if you plan the, if you're working with the junior high, the, with the prom committee yeah. to produce that, we've got to create events around that that support it. Mm -hmm. and, and again, there's a, there's a lot behind the scenes in terms of infrastructure putting that whole thing together. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, again, my... Uh, uh, I think the thing. My job was to Ginny for assisting us getting the decorations up. She did a beautiful job. Yeah, Ginny she Magamara. did a great job. And uh, Bobby Vershaw. She's good at that. She's, yeah. she's, she's very, talented. Talented. very talented. She's wonderful, yeah. So our talent program is, is in full force as well. We're going to meet shortly to discuss the results of our, of our Memorial Day talent uh, competition. Extravaganza? Oh, yeah. You're looking for it was <laughs> actually I was I was um, very pleased. Yeah, very pleased. Nice. And um, and again, somewhat doubtful when you try something new. You you you're plowing uh, new ground. It's kind of tough sometimes, and Huge this went very smoothly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very very smoothly. So we have over a hundred shows on the shelf this year. Uh, combination of events, and um, we have um, some a, a fair number of students coming this year from different schools, Manchester School of Music, to mention one, uh, but others. And um, we'll see how that goes. They're, they're scheduled for more earlier in the weeks, on a Monday or a Tuesday, uh, particularly at the end of July and in August. So other than that, I think we're off and running. Thank you, Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner. Thank you. Anybody else? Anything? Anything from the chamber? Anything? No? Okay. Well, I When's the chamber going to be open full time? It's it? very good day. Full Glad time. I asked. Great. Days of day. Days of day. And what would the hours be full time? Nine to nine. Nine to nine. Okay. Thank you. Seven days. I skipped the pool of nights. Holidays. 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 Weekends. Thank you, Doc. Doc, I'm glad to see you feeling better. You, you sent the humor back. Yeah, he's got the sense of humor back anyway. You never leave your home for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to approve the minutes from uh, May 11, 2016. Page 1. Page 2. Page 3. I got a motion to approve the minutes as posted. Uh, 
I'll move to approve the minutes as presented. A second. All in favor? Okay. Closing comments. I have none. I think I spoke. Sandcastles. Let's remember. Yeah, Sandcastles. Um, the uh, competition begins on Thursday, and the awards are given on Saturday. <coughs> and uh, just to let you know, right, please come you. out and see it, everybody. Oh, well, anything? Mm -hmm. I just would give a shout out to all the businesses and residents of the precinct. What the precinct does is coming into full flower at this time of the year. It takes an awful lot of work, a lot of money, and a lot of people to make it happen. That's right. And it's any time during your life you can do something to pay it forward to the next generation. I'm all for it. That's nice. All right, on that note, I will adjourn the meeting at 626. Thank you.